Welcome to lecture 17 on measure and integration. Today, we will start uh, the topic of integration. Uh, first, I will explain uh, the building blocks for uh, the integration and how the process will be uh, done. So, the topic for today's uh, discussion is integral of non-negative simple measurable functions. See, the basic idea is we want to define the notion of integral for a function f defined on a set x taking values in r star. So, uh, now um, for a function f, it is we can represent a function f as the positive part minus the negative part. The advantage of doing this is that f plus and f minus both are non-negative functions. And so, it is an integration being uh, a linear process. So, integral of f is going to be equal to integral of f plus minus integral f minus. So, it is enough to define the notion of integral for non-negative functions. And for non-negative uh, functions uh, f on x to r star, we recall that uh, we can uh, take it as uh, we look at functions which are first of all very simple functions. For example, let us look at a function f which is the indicator function of a set x uh, of a set a, a contained in x. This is a function which takes only two values. So, indicator function of a is a function on x taking values in r star. So, chi of a at 0 uh, of at a point x is equal to 0 if x does not belong to a and is 1 if x belongs to a. So, you can one can think of uh, this function uh, taking only two values. right? Now, the value where it is 0, the integral. So, we want to define the notion of integral and this is going to be with respect to a measure mu on uh, x. So, mu a measure on subsets of x. So, we are going to write it as x a d mu. So, what it should be on a the value is 1. So, we would like to put it as 1 times mu of a. In some sense, mu of a is the size of the set and 1 is the height. So, this is in a sense the area of uh, the we will the graph of the function. So, uh, let us um, uh, look at functions which are going to be uh, linear combinations of indicator uh, functions. So, we start looking at the integral of non-negative simple measurable functions. So, let us recall. Uh, so, we will uh, fix our notation that from now onwards, we are going to work on a measure space x s mu, where x is a set, s is a sigma algebra of subsets of x and mu is a measure on defined on s and this is a complete measure space. That means, that all sets A such that mu of A is 0 implies that A and all its subsets are inside S. So, let us denote by L lower 0 upper plus to be the class of all non-negative simple S measurable functions on X. So, now let us recall what was a non-negative simple measurable function S. It is a function defined on x taking non-negative values and it is it has a representation s of x is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n a i times the indicator function of the set a i evaluated at x, x belonging to x, where a i is uh, a 1, a 2, a 3, a n are extended real numbers and the sets a i s are in the sigma algebra s. So, they are uh, in the sigma algebra, uh, a i s are in the sigma algebra s and they are pairwise uh, disjoint. That means, a i intersection a j is empty for i not equal to j and the union of these sets is equal to x. So, this is uh, going to be the class of non-negative simple measurable functions. For such class of uh, for functions uh, in this class, we are going to define the notion of integral. So, for a function s in this class, if its representation is as given before, 
So, if s of x is equal to sigma a i indicator function of capital a i, then its integral is defined as um, s d mu. So, the integral is noted by integral sign s of x d mu x to be a i that is the value of the uh, function on the set a i times the measure of the set a i mu of a i. So, integral of s with respect to mu as written here is defined as sigma a i times mu of a i. a i is the value taken on the set a i. So, a i times the size of the set a i. So, mu of a i. Sometimes we do not indicate the variable x, we just write as integral s d mu uh, to be the integral of the simple function s, non negative simple measurable function s with respect to mu. And uh, let us uh, note here that our representation, uh, the integral uh, is with respect to a representation uh, of the function. So, first of all, we would like to show that uh, integral s d mu is well defined. So, let us prove that the integral is well defined. So, let us take a function s belonging to L plus 0. So, it is a non negative simple measurable function. So, let us say s is written as sigma a i integrator function of a i, i equal to 1 to n, also representable as sigma j equal to 1 to m of some b j chi of b j, where the sets a i s belong to the sigma algebra s, b j s belong to the sigma algebra s and union of a i s is equal to x and union of b j s is also equal to x and these sets are disjoint. So, a i intersection a j empty and b i intersection b j is empty for i not equal to j. So, let us say that a set s a simple function s has got two representations possible. So, what we want to show? So, we want to show that the integral of s. So, integral s d mu is well defined and that means what? So, mathematically that means we have to show that sigma a i mu of a i 1 to n is equal to sigma j equal to 1 to m b j mu of b j. So, this is what we have to show. So, let us start. So, sigma a i mu of a i i equal to 1 to n, I can write it as sigma i equal to 1 to n a i and then mu of this a i can be written as union of a i intersection b j, j equal to 1 to m because union of b j s is equal to x. So, a i intersection x and that is same as this. Now, this is a, a b j s are disjoint. So, these sets are a i intersection b j s for i fix are disjoint. So, by using finite additive property of the measure, we have this is equal to i equal to 1 to n a i and this is nothing but sigma j equal to 1 to m mu of a i intersection b j. Right? And similarly, we can write the other side that is sigma j equal to 1 to j equal to 1 to m of b j mu of b j to be equal to sigma j equal to 1 to m b j sigma i equal to 1 to n mu of a i intersection b j. So, the left hand side here is written as this sum, the right hand side is written as this sum. Now, we want to show that these two sums are equal. Now, let us observe that given that the function s has got two representations, this equal to this. So, 
how is this function calculated at a point x if x belongs to a i the value is a i and on the other hand it may belong to some b j the value will be b j. So, that in, in so that forces one to say that if x belongs to a i intersection b j then a i must be equal to b j. So, this is the crucial thing to note here that if s a simple non -negative, non negative simple measurable function is given two representations one is sigma a i capital a i indicator function of a i and sigma b j indicator function of b j then for x belonging to a i intersection b j the value of s of x on one hand it is a i other hand it is b j. So, a i must be equal to b j. So, this is the crucial thing to note. So, let us make this observation and write it out. So, note that so note that if x belongs to a i intersection b j if x belongs to a i intersection b j then s of x is equal to a i and is also equal to b j. So, a i is equal to b j and if x does not belong to a i intersection b j then s of x is equal to 0. So, uh, that means in this summation in this summation whenever x belongs to a i intersection b j this a i is going to be equal to b j otherwise in this sum that term does not matter. So, that proves the fact that so that will imply from these two equations from equation 1 and equation 2. So, this implies from equation 1 and 2 that sigma a i uh, i equal to 1 to n of mu a i is equal to sigma j equal to 1 to m b j mu of b j. So, that is integral s d mu can be defined as either of these sums. So, is equal to either this or this is well defined. So, the integral of a non negative simple measurable function. So, we can choose any representation of uh, uh, we can choose any representation of the non negative simple function and define its integral in terms of that. Next, let us look at uh, properties of uh, uh, this integral. So, we are going to look at functions s, s 1, s 2, which are non negative simple measurable functions. Alpha will be a real number, alpha bigger than or equal to 0. Then, we are going to look at what happens to various properties of. So, first observation is that integral s d mu is a non negative number, it could be equal to plus infinity. So, integral s d mu is an extended non negative real number. That is obvious because what is s d mu? Integral of s d mu is summation of a i's times mu of a i's, all the terms are non negative. So, this is a non negative number. So, this is an obvious property. The second property we want to check that for a non negative simple function s alpha s belongs to L plus 0 plus and the integral of alpha s d mu is same as alpha times the integral of s d mu. So, let us check that. So, s belongs to L plus 0 is a non negative simple measurable function. So, let us write let us write s is equal to sigma a i indicator function of a i where union a i is equal to x. So, whenever it is a partition, we will write as this square bracket union over i equal to x and alpha is a non negative alpha belonging to r star alpha bigger than or equal to 0. Then alpha of s, so has the representation it is alpha a i chi of a i and a i is are still a partition of x, but that means if this is the representation. So, integral alpha s d mu integral of alpha s with respect to mu is e going to be equal to by our definition i equal to 1 to n alpha a i times mu of 
A i and this is a finite sum non negative everything. So, alpha comes out alpha times the summation of i equal to 1 to n of a i mu of a i and that is nothing but alpha times integral of s d mu. So, that proves the property that the integral of non negative simple functions is uh, if you multiply it by a constant alpha then the alpha comes out. So, integral of alpha s d mu is equal to alpha times s d mu. Next, we want to show that it is a linear operation. So, we want to check that if s 1 and s 2 belong to L 0 plus, then s 1 plus s 2 belong to L 0 plus that we have actually we have already checked, but we will check it again today also. And the integral of s 1 plus s 2 d mu is integral of s 1 plus integral of s 2. So, for such things we have, uh, uh, so let us take a function s 1 s 2 belonging to L plus 0. So, non negative simple measurable function. So, let us write let s 1 be equal to sigma a i chi of a i, where a i is form a partition of x and let us write s 2 as sigma j equal to 1 to m b j chi of b j union b j is partition of x. So, if you recall we had said that we can bring the both s 1 and s 2 a common partition and what is that common partition a i intersection b j. So, what we are saying is you can write s 1 as sigma i equal to 1 to n sigma j equal to 1 to m a i chi of a i intersection b j. And also similarly s 2 can be written as i equal to 1 to n sigma j equal to uh, 1 to m of b j chi of a i intersection b j. Now, here note that union over i and j a i intersection b j that is a partition of the whole space. So, that is equal to x. So, this is um, the uh, this is the uh, point to be sort of uh, noted that whenever you are given uh, two uh, functions s 1 and s 2 with two representations which involve some partitions a i and partition b j, then we can bring them to a common partition namely a i intersection b j. And now, we can define what is s 1 plus s 2. So, s 1 plus s 2 is going to be equal to sigma over i 1 to n sigma over j equal to 1 to n a i plus b j chi of a a i intersection b j. That is clear because on a i intersection b j s 1 is a i and on a i intersection b j uh, s 2 is b j. So, s 1 plus s 2 will be equal to a i plus b j on a i intersection b j. So, once we have gotten a representation of uh, s 1 plus s 2, we can define what is the integral of s 1 plus s 2. So, this representation gives us that integral of s 1 plus s 2 d mu is equal to summation over i 1 to n summation over j 1 to m of a i plus b j into mu of a i intersection b j. right? So, because this is the representation, so a i plus b j is the value on the set a i intersection b j. So, the integral is going to be equal to summation over i summation over j of a i plus b j the value on the set a i intersection b j. Now, the right hand side we can uh, right uh, split. So, that is equal to two terms one is summation over i summation over j of a i times mu of a i intersection b j plus the second term summation i equal to 1 to n summation j equal to 1 to m 
of B j. Uh, so, A i and second term is B j mu of A i intersection B j. And now, these are all finite sums. So, we can write the first term as sigma i equal to 1 to n take A i outside and this is summation of mu of A i intersection B j because this is summation over i only. So, we can take it out over j equal to 1 to m of A i intersection B j plus here summation over j and summation over i. So, we will write it as summation over j first B j and inside is summation over i equal to I have interchanged the order of summation they are finite terms only finite sums only. So, that is allowed. So, that is 1 of mu of A i intersection B j. And now, we observe that the first sum by the finite additivity property of the measure is nothing but mu of A i and this summation over i this sum is nothing but mu of B j because A i is form a partition of x and here B j is form. So, first term is equal to summation i equal to 1 to n A i mu of A i plus summation j equal to 1 to m B j of uh, mu of B j. And now, clearly this is integral of S 1 d mu plus this second term is integral S 2 d mu. So, that proves the fact that integration is a linear process. Namely, um, integral uh, if S 1 and S 2 are in L 0 plus, then uh, S 1 plus S 2 also is in L 0 plus and the integral is of S 1 plus S 2 is equal to integral of S 1 plus integral of S 2. Next property we want to check is the following that for a set if E is a set in the sigma algebra S and we multiply S non negative simple measurable function by the indicator function of E, then that function also belongs to L 0 plus that again we had checked it earlier when we defined non negative simple measurable functions. So, its integral is defined and we want to check that E going to nu of E which is integral of a S indicator function of E d mu is actually a measure on S. So, this gives a method of generating more measures on the sigma algebra E. So, let us prove this property. So, let us take a function. So, let us take a non negative simple measurable function L plus 0 S of given by sigma i equal to 1 to n a i indicator function of a i where union of a i is, is equal to x. And E is a fix set in the sigma algebra S. Then S times the indicator function of E. So, multiply this equation on both sides by indicator function that is i equal to 1 to n a i chi a i multiplied with chi of E. And now, here is the observation that the product of indicator function of two sets is nothing but the indicator function of the intersection. So, this can be written as i equal to 1 to n a i this product indicator function of a i into indicator function of E can be written as the indicator function of a i intersection E. Okay. So, that is only observation one has to make. And now, so S times indicator function of E is given by this. So, where union of A i is intersection E, what will be that? That is a disjoint union giving you the set E. And on E complement, this function is 0. So, uh, if you like, you can add one more term here 0 times uh, the indicator function of E complement but that is not. So, normally whenever the that kind of a set uh, that term will not mention it here. So, automatically on the complement it is 0 and that gives a partition of the set. So, this means S of indicator function of E is A i times indicator function of A i intersection E where these things form a partition. So, that implies S times the indicator function of E 
is a non negative simple measurable function and what is the integral of that. So, integral of s chi of e d mu is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n a i mu of a i intersection e. So, that is the integral of this function. So, we want to prove that if we call this as nu of e that is a measure. Okay. So, let us check that property to check it is a measure what we have to check. So, nu of nu of a set e is defined as sigma uh, by our previous calculations a i times mu of a i intersection e i equal to 1 to n, where a i is our partition of x and a i is are in the sigma algebra always. So, claim nu is a measure. So, what is to be checked? Nu of empty set equal to E is empty set. So, mu of A i intersection E that is empty set. So, that is 0. So, it is equal to 0. Okay. What is the second property? We want to check nu is countably additive. So, for that, so let us write let E be equal to union of E j, j equal to 1 to infinity, where all the sets are in the sigma algebra. So, you want to show that to show nu of E is equal to sigma nu of E j, j equal to 1 to infinity. So, that is what we have to show. So, let us compute both sides and show the required property. So, let us uh, look at uh, nu of uh, E. So, nu of E is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n a i mu of a i intersection E. By definition, right? nu of E is defined as this thing. Okay? And what is E? Let us put the prop value of E. So, it is i equal to 1 to n a i mu of a i intersection union <coughs> disjoint union E j, j equal to 1 to infinity. Right? That is by the definition of um, by the uh, fact that E is a disjoint union of E j. But that we can write it as summation i equal to 1 to n a i mu of. So, this is nothing but. So, we can write it as disjoint union over j 1 to infinity of a i intersection E j right, by the distributive property of intersection over union. So, this is a countable disjoint union of sets in the sigma algebra. So, by the countable additive property of the measure mu, this term is equal to summation i equal to 1 to n a i summation j equal to 1 to infinity of mu a i intersection E j. Right? And now, note that we have got two sums here, one is summation a i, another is summation j equal to 1 to infinity and all are non-negative extended real numbers. So, we can interchange the order of integration without any problem. So, we can write this as summation over j first, then summation over i 1 to n a i mu of a i intersection e j. Okay. So, we write this as this. So, now, note that this the term summation over i a i mu of a i intersection e j is nothing but uh, the uh, nu of e j. Right? So, by definition this is summation over j equal to 1 to infinity. So, this is nu of e j. So, we have shown that nu of e is summation nu of e j is whenever e is equal to union uh, of disjoint by pairwise disjoint sets e j. So, that proves that nu is a measure. So, we have proved this property also that for a set e in S, the integral uh, S 
times indicator function of e is a non negative simple measurable function and if its integral is denoted by nu of e then nu of e is a measure as e varies over measurable sets and this measure has a very nice property so this new measure nu of e has a very nice property that nu of e is zero whenever mu of e is zero so let us uh, just check that property again uh, check that property the nu of e is defined as summation i equal to 1 to n a i mu of a i intersection e where union of a i is, is equal to x. So, if mu of e is equal to 0 that will imply that mu of each a i intersection e is also 0, because a i intersection e is a subset of e and mu is a measure. So, mu is also monotone right. So, mu being monotone mu of a i intersection e is less than or equal to mu of e which is equal to 0. So, that means, this is equal to 0. So, implies mu of. So, each term in the definition of nu of e is 0 that means, nu of e is 0. So, this new measure which is defined via integration of non negative simple functions has the property that mu of e equal to 0 implies nu of e equal to 0. This uh, is a, uh, a very special property. So, it relates two measures mu and nu that means, it says whenever e is a set of measure 0 for mu, it is also a set of measure 0 for nu and later on uh, almost in the end of the course we will characterize uh, such measures. Whenever two measures are related by this, there is a theorem which says that nu must be representable as integral with respect to mu. So, we will come to that theorem a bit late uh, in our course when we have finished integration and some more properties of it. So, this nu of e which is written as uh, which is an integral is uh, um, having a special property and let us also mention that integral of s indicator function of e d mu is also written as integral e of s d mu. So, this is another way of writing. So, this is called integral of s over e. Okay. So, this so we say this is integral of s over the set e. Okay. So, that is uh, the notation will follow because outside uh, e s is 0 in this representation. So, next property we want to check is that if s 1 is bigger than s 2, then integral s 1 is bigger than integral s 2. So, let us check that property. So, let us write s 1 which is a non negative simple measurable function as sigma a i indicator function of a i and s 2 as sigma b j chi of b j j equal to 1 to m. So, as we had mentioned whenever you want to do some analysis regarding two simple functions s 1 and s 2 bring them to a common partition. So, we will write this is also equal to sigma over i 1 to n s 1 can be written as sigma over i sigma over j 1 to m a i times indicator function of a i intersection b j. And so, the s 1 can be written as this and we can write s 2 as sigma over i sigma over j 1 to m of b j times the indicator function of a i intersection b j. So, now and union of a i b j intersection b j j equal to 1 to m union i equal to 1 to n is a partition of x. So, now they have common partitions and when you say s 1 is bigger than s 2 means what? So, let us take a point x. So, if x belongs to x then it belongs to 1 of a i intersection b j s 1 has the value a i and s 2 has the value b j. That means, s 1 of x which is a i must be bigger than or equal to s 2 of x which is b j. 
on A i intersection B j. So, that means, if this is the representation, so then S 1 bigger than S 2 implies that A i is bigger than or equal to B j, if x belongs to A i intersection B j. Once you observe that, now uh, uh, problem is solved. So, what is integral of S 1 d mu? That by definition is sigma over i 1 to n sigma over j 1 to m of a i mu of a i intersection b j and and a i uh, is bigger than b j if x belongs to this. So, this is bigger than or equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n sigma j equal to 1 to m of b j mu of a i intersection b j and which is equal to integral of s 2 d mu. So, integral of s 1 is bigger than integral of s 2 if s 1 is bigger than or equal to s 2. So, that proves the next property. Okay. Now, we are going to look at uh, um, a special functions if s 1 and s 2 are non-negative simple measurable functions then we want to look at s 1 v s 2 and s 1 wedge s 2. Recall uh, how was s 1 v s 2 defined? s 1 uh, v s 2 was defined as the maximum of s 1 and s 2 and similarly s 1 wedge s 2 was defined as the minimum of s 1 and s 2. So, our uh, and we had shown that if s 1 and s 2 are non negative simple measurable functions then the maximum of S 1 and S 2 and the minimum of S 1 and S 2 are also non negative simple measurable functions. So, we want to check this property now here that that integral of S 1 wedge S 2 is less than S i integral less than or equal to integral of the maximum, but that is obvious because if S 1 and S 2 are simple measurable non negative simple measurable functions and you look at S 1 wedge S 2 uh, S 1 wedge S 2 that is the minimum of S 1 and S 2, then clearly S 1 wedge S 2 is the minimum. So, it is going to be less than or equal to S 1 and also going to be less than or equal to S 2. And uh, S 1 v S 2, S 1 v S 2 the maximum is going to be bigger than S 1 and S 2 both. So, it is going to be less than or equal to S 1 maximum S 2. So, what we are saying is S 1 uh, wedge S 2 is less than or equal to both S 1 and S 2 and both S 1 and S 2 are less than or equal to maximum of S 1 and S 2 and just now and all are simple functions. So, what we have proved just now. So, that will uh, say that the integral of S 1 S 2 the minimum of S 1 and S 2 d mu is less than or in integral of S 1 also less than integral of S 2. So, less than or equal to integral S i d mu i equal to 1 and 1 and 2 and both these integrals are less than or equal to integral of S 1 wedge S 2 d mu. So, that uh, proves the required property and that follows from the earlier property on uh, that if S 1 is less than or equal to or bigger than or equal to S 2 then integral S 1 is bigger than or equal to integral S 2. And now, let us look at uh, a property. Uh, how does this integral behave with respect to limiting operations? So, we want to claim that if S n is a sequence increasing sequence in uh, L 0 plus. So, it is an increasing sequence of non negative measurable functions increasing to a simple function S of x then integral S d mu is limit n going to infinity integral S n d mu. So, this is uh, uh, the first uh, in a sense non trivial uh, argument required. So, S 1 S n are functions in L 0 plus non, non negative simple measurable functions S n increasing to S S belonging to L plus 0 non negative simple measurable. We want to show this implies that integral S d mu is equal to limit n going to infinity of integral S n d mu. 
So, this is what we want to show. So, now let us start uh, observing. So, first, so what is the proof of this? So, note what we are given is S n is increasing to S. Okay. So, that means what? If S n is increasing to S, that means that S n of x is going to be less than S of x for every x belonging to x. Right. So, that is obvious from this. If this, then this implies S n is increasing to S implies each S n x is less than or equal to S of x. Now, S n is a simple function, S is a simple non negative simple measurable function, S n is less than or equal to this for every n. So, that implies that integral of S n d mu is less than or equal to integral S d mu for every n. So, integral S n d mu is less than or equal to integral S d mu and integral S n d mu is an increasing sequence of extended non negative extended real numbers. So, implies that the limit of that which exists may be equal to plus infinity S n d mu is also less than or equal to integral S d mu. So, here is uh, that a n is a sequence of non negative extended real numbers a n less than or equal to a implies a n s are increasing. So, limit of a n will be less than or equal to a. So, we are in extended real numbers keep in mind. So, we have proved so let us call it as 1. So, we have proved in the required equality we have proved that right hand side limit n going to infinity integral s n d mu is bigger than or equal to integral s d mu. We want to prove the other way around inequality also. So, to do that here is a uh, here is a small uh, manipulation that we have to do. So, so for that what we do is the following. So, let us fix let a number c between 0 and 1 be fixed. Then c times s of x for any point x c times s of x is going to be strictly less than s of x. So, here is c times s of x and here is s of x. Right? So, let us fix c between 0 and 1 and look at the end for any point x let us look at c times s of x. Then the first observation because c is between 0 and 1 c is strictly less than 1. So, c times s of x will be less than s of x. So, it will be somewhere here and now s n x is increasing to s of x. S n x. So, after some stage s n x must be on the right side of c times s of x. So, after some stage it must be on the right side of. So, this is the picture that will hop, happen. So, let us write. So, let us define b n to be the set of all x such that s n of x is bigger than c times s of x. So, collect all those points right? where this is going to happen, where s n of x is bigger than. See, this stage will depend upon n. So, then now, so that means, so implies that first of all, so let us note that b n plus if s n x is bigger than c of s n then s n plus 1 is anyway bigger than s n of x. So, because s n is increasing. So, s n plus 1 x is going to be bigger than. So, b n. So, if so that means this b n is inside b n plus 1 for every n. That means that is b n is an increasing sequence. So, implies b n is an increasing sequence. Okay. So, that is the first observation because all b n s s n is increasing. So, if x belongs to b n then s n x is bigger than c times s of x. Right? But s n uh, s n is increasing. So, s n plus 1 x is going to be bigger than s n of x. So, if s n x is bigger than c times s of x then s n plus 1 also is going to be bigger. So, x belonging to b n implies x belongs to 
b n plus 1. That means, b n is a subset of b n plus 1. That means, b n is an increasing sequence of sets. And also observe that each b n is an element in the sigma algebra S. Right? Each b n is an element in the sigma algebra S, because b n is where S n is bigger than c times S. All are simple measurable functions and we have observed that um, such sets are in the sigma algebra. So, b n is an increasing sequence of sets in the sigma algebra S and let us observe what is the union of uh, these b n's. So, union of b n's n equal to 1 to infinity obviously, it is contained in x because all are subsets of x, but by the fact that for every x this picture that we observed here for every x there is going to be some stage after which S n is going to be bigger than x because c times S x is strictly less than this. So, that fact implies that this union is equal to x because so observation here is because for every x belonging to x there is a stage n naught such that S n naught x is bigger than c times s of x, right? That is because S n x is converging to s of x, right? Because S n x is going to increase to s of x, so it has to cross over the uh, this point c times s of x. Otherwise, it cannot reach that point. Okay? So, B n is an increasing sequence of sets in the sigma algebra, and their union is equal to x and mu is a measure countable additive and we had proved a equivalent uh, way of saying that mu countably additive is same as saying whenever a sequence of sets a n is increasing then mu of a n must increase to mu of a. So, by that fact mu of x must be equal to limit n going to infinity mu of b n s. Okay. So, that must be true. So, now let us uh, use all these facts and uh, look at. So, now so thus if we look at integral of c times integral of c times s of x d mu x, you look at this uh, integral. Okay. We, so, this so first of all we claim that this is equal to integral of c times s of x d mu x over b n s. Okay. So, first observation we want to make at that and that is because if we look at this as a measure right if we look this as a measure nu of b n okay, just now we proved integral over sets of simple functions over sets is a measure. So, look at that measure nu, nu and b n is increasing to x. So, nu b n must go to nu of x. So, this fact we are using for this is the fact we are using for not mu, but we are using for nu and where what is nu? Nu is integral of c s x over b n. Okay. So, that is the fact we are using here. So, that means this is equal to so. Now, on b n what is happening on the set b n? On b n s n of x is bigger than c times. So, that means c times s of x is less than. So, it is less than integral over b n of s n of x d mu x, because that is the definition of the set b n. Okay. So, we are replaced c s x, we are using the fact integral of s 1 is less than integral of s 2, whenever s 1 is less than or equal to integral of uh, whenever s 1 is less than or equal to s 2. So, this is less than or equal to this. Now, b n is a set subset of x. So, this integral I can replace and say that this is less than. So, this uh, is less than or this is less than or equal to integral over the whole space x s n x d mu x. So, what we are saying is by this analysis what we have shown is that the integral c times s of x d mu x is less than or equal to this for every n. And because this happens for every n and s n these integrals are increasing sequence of numbers. So, this implies that integral c times s of x 
d mu x is also less than or equal to integral over x of s uh, limit. So, is less than or equal to limit n going to infinity of integral s n d mu. Okay. And now, this holds for every c between 0 and 1. So, I can take the limit as c goes to uh, 1. So, implies that integral of s d mu is also less than or equal to integral limit less than or equal to limit n going to infinity of integral s n d mu. So, that is my other way round inequality 2. So, we have proved both ways inequalities 1 and 2. So, 1 if you recall we had already shown 1 that integral s n d mu is less than integral s d mu that was 1 we proved and now we have proved integral s d mu. So, 1 plus 2 imply that integral s d mu is equal to limit n going to infinity integral s n d mu. So, that proves uh, the result the required result namely that uh, n integral of s n uh, if s n is increasing sequence in L plus then you can interchange. So, what is s that is a limit. So, integral of the limit is equal to limit of the integrals whenever s n is increasing non negative simple functions. So, it is a nice property for increasing sequences. So, at this stage uh, one can ask the question that we have proved that uh, if s n is an increasing sequence uh, uh, of non negative simple measurable functions increasing to s then integral of s n converts to integral of s. Will this property hold for decreasing sequences? Namely, if s n is decreasing non negative simple functions decreasing to s can we say that integral of s n will decrease to integral s we do not know that fact at present we cannot uh, prove at present this fact right. In fact, uh, uh, many more properties of uh, such things we will explore as we extend the notion of integral. So, we will stop uh, here today and uh, analyze uh, next time another way of representing integral of non negative simple measurable functions and then go over to define integral of non negative measurable functions. We will extend the notion of integral from non negative simple measurable functions to non negative measurable functions. We will do it next lecture. Thank you.